Good day everyone! So for today's video, we will discuss about volcanoes and other igneous activities. By the way, we are the group 2 composed of yours truly, Jivalin Marcel Gahe, Kanit Teguhoy, and Rhea Rachel Canyoneo. So our objectives for today's video is first to define what is volcano and its features, discuss how volcanoes are formed, discuss the types of volcanoes, and lastly, to discuss the igneous activities. So I assure we already know what is a volcano, but as a review, volcano is an opening or a rupture in the Earth's crust through which magma, a hot molten rock, ash, and gas escape from below the surface. Did you know that the word volcano is derived from the name of Vulcano, an island of Sicily which in turn was named after Vulcan, the Roman god of fire? But are you wondering what are the parts of a volcano? So here it is. We have here a magma chamber where our magma are stored. We have a main vent where our magma passes through towards the surface. We can also have a secondary vent, a secondary cone, and we have a crater, the opening of our volcanic terrain, and a lava flow. It lava, it is a molten rock or a magma that erupted from the volcano. And when a volcano erupts, it produces volcanic ash and bumps, forming a volcanic cloud or ash cloud, rather. And it consists of small pieces of pulverized rocks, minerals, and volcanic glass. Notice that we also have layers of ash and lava in our parts of the volcano, as you can see in the picture, because volcanic terrain is built by a slow accumulation of erupted lava. Through a series of cracks within and beneath the volcano, the vent connects to one or more linked storage areas and of molten or partially molten rock or the magma. This connection to fresh magma allows the volcano to erupt over and over again in the same location. In this way, volcano grows even larger until it is no longer stable. Pieces of volcano collapse as f rocks, falls, or as landslides. But how do volcanoes erupt? Originating many tens of miles beneath the ground, magma is lighter than surrounding solid rock, and it is driven towards Earth's surface by buoyancy. It is lighter than the surrounding rock, and by pressure from gas within it, Magma forces its way upward and may ultimately break through weak areas in the Earth's crust. If so, an eruption begins. There are factors affecting volcanic eruptions and factors that determine the violence of an eruption. First is the composition of the magma, the temperature of the magma, and third is the dissolved gases in the magma. And these three factors actually control the viscosity of a given magma, which in turn controls the nature of an eruption. Viscosity, it is a measure of a material's resistance to flow. And the factors affecting the viscosity is the temperature and the silica content. Here is a table of the magma composition. It is a summary to show the comparison of how violent each composition is. And we have three magma compositions here, the basaltic, andesitic, and the rhyolitic. So shown in the table is the silica content, the viscosity, the gas content, and the tendency to form pyroclastics or the ejected rock fragments and the volcanic landforms of each um, composition. The magma that flows from volcanoes contains rocks and minerals including silica. And if magma is high in silica, the higher the viscosity and the less the lava flows. And if the lower the silica level, the lower the viscosity and the more easily the lava flows. Did you know that there are two types of lava? These are the Pahoyhoy lava and the AA or AA lava. Pahoyhoy has a smooth, billowy, ropey surface, while AA has a rough surface. Here are some sample illustrations or images of the types of lava.
This time, let's move on to the types of volcanoes. So we have here the shield volcano, cinder cone volcano, and composite volcano. So let's have the shield volcano first. So what is a shield volcano? So it's, this is a type of volcano that looks like a shield when viewed from above. While these volcanoes take a while to form, they aren't necessarily low. In fact, the world's tallest active volcano, Mauna Kea in Hawaii, is a shield volcano. So shield volcanoes are built slowly from low viscosity lava that spreads far and quickly. The lava eventually dries from a, to form a thin white sheet and after repeated eruptions, a mound starts to form. So they have gentle slopes and are the largest volcanoes in the world. Examples are volcanoes in Hawaii and Iceland, produces the least destructive eruptions. Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea, the two largest volcanoes on the island of Hawaii, are about 30,000 feet tall when you measure from their bases on the bottom of the ocean, 16,000 feet below the sea level, to their tops at about 14,000 feet above sea level. So the lava flows out, cools, and hardens, adding the layers of cooled and hardened lava underneath. This process creates a gradual increases, increase rather, in elevation over, result, over time resulting in the, in the formation of shield volcanoes. So as, as you can see in the picture, that is what the anatomy of shield volcano looks like. We have there the breakout, fire mountain, the lava flow. You can also see there the lava flow field, lace plumb, lava tube, debra, vent, and the fog or the volcanic smoke. So now let's find out the characteristics of a shield volcano. So first, shield volcanoes are composed of basaltic magma, high in temperature, but very low on silica and gas content. Next, the lava erupted from the shield volcanoes are runny and non-acidic. Third, as the erupted lava is runny, they flow long distance before they solidify. This result in the gentle sides of shield volcanoes and there are shorter periods between eruption and explosions are less violent and lastly shield volcanoes are found on divergent plate boundaries in the philippines canlaon is an example of a shield volcano type is the cinder cone volcanoes so cinder cone are the simplest type of volcano they are built from particles of blobs and concealed lava ejected from a single vent as the gas-charged lava is blown violently into the air, it breaks into small fragments that solidify and fall as cinders around the vent to form a circular or oval cone. Most cinder cones have a bowl-shaped crater at the summit and rarely lies more than a thousand feet or so above their surroundings. So cinder cones are relatively small volcanoes built primarily of pyroclastic material ejected from a single vent and then cool quickly in the air. These accumulate to make the sides of the volcano. So we have here the steep slope angle rather than in height and size frequently occur in groups and some characteristics of cinder cones is that they have steep slope and can be seen in clusters or in groups. So this is what it looks like, the anatomy of the cinder cone volcano. So for the example, Mauna Kea is a volcano on the, on the American island of Hawaii and Mount Etna, a volcano on the Italian island of Sicily, are both covered with hundreds of cinder cones. And in the Philippines, we have Smith Volcano, Taal Volcano, Mount Mayabobo, and Mosan Volcano. And the last type is composite volcanoes, or also known as the stratovolcano, are steep-sided symmetrical cones of large dimensions built from several layers of lava, pumice, ash, and tephra. So it is technically formed along the Earth's subduction zones where one tectonic plate slides beneath another. The Pacific Basin and the Mediterranean Sea are such regions. So we have the Mount Fuji in Japan and Mount Sasha in California are examples of composite volcanoes. And composite volcano is built over a span of thousands of years through multiple eruptions. The eruptions build 
the composite volcano layer by layer until the volcano towards thousands of meters. So some layers are of lava, while others might be a uh, uh, might be ash, rock, etc. And for the examples, we have the Mount Fuji in Japan, Mount Cotopaxi in Ecuador, Mount Sacha in California, Mount Hood in Oregon, and Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainer in Washington. And for its anatomy, this is what it looks like. Volcanic activities occurs at two types of plate boundaries, mid-ocean ridges and subduction zones. Let us first discuss the mid-ocean ridges. At mid-ocean ridges, basaltic eruptions produce new seafloor crust. These underwater eruptions don't produce big mountainous volcanoes, which is why they are often overlooked at the most volcanically active features on Earth. At nearly 60,000 kilometers or 37,000 miles long, the mid-ocean is the longest mountain range on Earth. It formed and evolves as a result of spreading in Earth's lithosphere, the crust and the upper mantle, at the divergent boundaries between tectonic plates. The vast majority of volcanic activity on the planet, planet occurs along the mid-ocean ridge and it is the place where the crust of the Earth is born. The material that erupts at spreading centers along the mid-ocean ridge is primarily basalt, the most common rock on Earth. Because this spreading occurs on a, on a sphere, the rate separation along the mid-ocean ridge varies around the globe. In places where spreading is fastest, more than 80 millimeters or 3 inches per year, the ridge has relatively gentle topography and is roughly dome-shaped in cross-section as a result of the many layers of lava that build up over time. Number two is the subduction zone. As you can see on the right side of the presentation, it is a diagram of the geological process of subduction. Subduction zone is where the oceanic lithosphere of a tectonic plate converges with the less dense lithosphere of a second plate. The heavier plate dives beneath the second plate and sinks into the mantle. Subduction zone um, volcanoes are created on the overriding plate as melt from subducting plate rises up through the mantle and the crust. This time, we will discuss about intrusive activity. Intrusive volcanic activity takes place beneath the Earth's surface when magma is forced to rise to the surface, and only a small amount of it actually made it to the top. The majority of the magma is interrupted into the crust when it solidifies and forms a range of features. Some intrusion landforms include dikes, seals, batoliths, and lacoliths. Dikes are vertical intrusion which cut across the layers of rocks. They often occur in groups which are known as dike swarms. Seals, on the other hand, are horizontal intrusions which come between layers form. Then eventually the lacolis. It is a body of intrusive rock with a dome-shaped upper surface and a level base, fed by a conduit from below. It forms when magma, or the molten rock rising to the Earth's crust, begins to spread out horizontally, prying apart the host rock strata. The pressure of the magma is high enough that the overlying strata are forced upward, giving the lacolith its dome-like form. Erosion can expose intrusive activity and bring it to the surface. Batoliths are a great example of features which can be exposed through erosion. They are formed deep between the Earth's surface when magma cools and solidifies, forming large crystals in rocks such as granites.